and welcome. Hey, everybody. It's so good to be here with you. It is. I hope you all have had a good week. Good. Definitely. Good. Me, I have. How about you? Yes. Good. All right. So, well, let's get started with our Bible verse and let's practice saying it responsibly. I'll say it and then you will repeat after me. Okay, so give perfect. us some good practice. I think that sounds great. I think we might need a little freshening up on it. Okay. So remember, this is from Psalms. Let the words of my mouth, let the words of my mouth, and the meditation of my heart, and the meditation of my heart, be acceptable in your sight, be acceptable in your sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. That was good. That was good. I'm glad we practiced because we haven't yeah. done it for a couple no. of weeks. Should we say so. it one more time all together? Yeah, let's do let's it. Try oh that. yeah, that sounds great. Yeah. All right. Let, Let the, the words, words of my mouth and, and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, my strength and, and my redeemer. Okay, great. I like it. Well, January 24th is the third Sunday after Epiphany, so here in our church wheel, we'd be probably about right in there. So we're moving through. We're getting close to Lent. Yeah. Amazing. All right. So um, you may remember that Epiphany is a season from the Feast of the Epiphany, which is January 6th, and it goes through the Tuesday before Ash Wednesday which is the start of Lent. The gospel stories of this season describe various events that manifest the divinity of Jesus. Examples are the coming of the Magi, the baptism of Jesus, and Sunday after the Epiphany is always devoted to the transfiguration. Jesus' identity as the Son of God is dramatically revealed in the transfiguration gospel. Exciting. It is exciting. All right, well now, Muffy is going to tell us a story. Okay, today we're back to the Beatitudes curriculum, our story, and so we're going to climb the mountain. Now, does everybody remember the different ways to climb this mountain? What do you think, Chrissy? Mm. Do you remember the ways? Oh, I know you can hike. Yeah. And and you, you can, can use a rope. A rope, a walking stick. Mm-hmm. And then a wheelchair, we yes, said. And yes. then what else? We, we said well, you could partner, right? Like we could both help each other yeah. up the mountain. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. And so also, too, what we're going to do when we climb up, there's a whole bunch of other people who are coming with us. And we're going to go up to the top to hear about what Jesus is saying, because all of us are followers of Jesus. So everybody, think about how you want to climb the mountain, and then we'll get ready to go. How do you think you're going to do it? I think I'll hike today. You know what? I was thinking the same thing. You lead the way and I'll follow. All right. All righty, let's, let's do go. it. Oh, I'm getting tired. I know it. <laughs> Almost there. We made it. Woo! All right. Whew. Let's take our binoculars out and look mm. over the land and see what we can see. Yes. Back in Jesus' time, when people were on mountains, they felt like they were close to closer to God because of how high the mountains are, and they were felt like they were in the clouds and closer to God. And so Jesus told them up on the mountain about God's kingdom. And God's kingdom is a place where there is abundance of everything. There is more honor, there's enough food, there's enough money, there's enough love, there's enough resources for every child of God to thrive and prosper. And so, in the Beatitudes, I'm going to get the Bible, and I'm opening it up to Matthew chapter 5, verse 10, and what it says at verse 10 is, Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now this, this beatitude is a little difficult because have you ever thought of the time when you have 
thought that you were doing the right thing, but you got in trouble doing it, or maybe if you didn't get in trouble, somebody yelled at you and criticized you for doing it. And you know what? It made you feel bad. Doesn't that make you feel bad when somebody criticizes you or, you know, yells at you for getting in trouble or whatever? And it just doesn't seem fair. And so nobody understands this feeling and experience more than Jesus. And so in Jesus' day, the people who were follow, trying to follow Jesus didn't have much of a voice or power as individuals. But when they began to work together for a fairer way of life, their voice got more powerful and stronger. And then, and then what they did is they gathered in large groups to work together to, to get have a better, healthier life for everyone. And sometimes when that happens, the people who are in power are afraid of the people who don't have power because they're working together in big groups to make things better for them. And so when that happens, when people in power feel threatened, they can act, they become afraid, and they can act unkindly to other people. So one time Jesus was teaching in the synagogue and he saw a woman who had not been able to stand up straight for 18 years. It's a very long time to be hunched over and to not be able to stand up straight. That would be very painful. So anyway, he had took mercy on her and healed her. And she, of course, was overjoyed because she could finally stand up straight and she could relax and feel so good. But the religious leader of the synagogue did not like it that Jesus healed her because he healed her on the Sabbath. And in the Jewish law of that day, when no healing or, or anything that was considered work could be done on the Sabbath. And so he got very angry at Jesus and started yelling at him. So the, when he was yelling at him, the religious leader tried to get the other people who had witnessed this wonderful miracle to be mad and angry at Jesus. And they were kind of confused that, you know, this religious leader would want them to be mad at Jesus. But Jesus said that God wants all of the people to be set free and to be whole. And that, and that it is okay for him to heal somebody on the Sabbath. So when the people heard that, they rejoiced at all of the wonderful things that Jesus was doing. And also too at that time, the Roman ruler Herod wanted to kill Jesus. He wanted to kill Jesus because he did not want the government to change at all. Herod liked that he could make all these decisions. He liked that he was getting richer. He liked that he was getting, that he was so powerful and he didn't care what happened to anybody else. And so when the people, when people like Jesus and his followers tried to challenge those and change those systems that Herod had put in place, they faced a fight. And sometimes when that happens, they were put into jail they were made to leave their country or shamed by their community. And shame, being shamed was just as bad as being made to leave your community because what it did is it cut those people off from their friends and families. And people normally don't wanna be around people who are shamed. And this is what's called persecution. So persecution, it's a big word and it's all, can be a hard word, but what it means is that persecution is what happens when people are treated badly and unfairly, especially because of their race or thy, their identity or their beliefs. And so Jesus told them, he said that when you are working to bring God's kingdom to the earth, you can expect people to react harshly to you. You can expect them to be mean and unkind to you when you are trying to change things for the better. And he said that even though 
when this happens, it can be, even though it is really hard for us when that happens, that when it does happen, Jesus told us that the followers who are, of his who are persecuted are living an, out God's love and that they are actually being blessed as the result of people persecuting you. So, even though that sounds like a little bit of a confusing story, just know that when you are trying to do the right thing and somebody hurts your feelings by telling you that you are not doing the right thing, but you know in your heart that you are doing the right thing, know that Jesus is on your side and God is on your side too. And now we want to give you a blessing. A blessing is something you receive. So open your hands like you're ready to receive a gift. We will speak a blessing. If you receive it, take it and put it in your heart. May, May God, God bless you with, with courage to make hard choices, even when other people don't understand. Amen. Amen. Well, now I think you're going to talk to Father AJ. I am going to talk to Father AJ, and we've got some good questions for y'all this week. All right. I can't wait. Okay, so today I thought it'd be, Father AJ has never been downstairs, well, in our godly playroom, which is where we've been filming our Beatitudes, the mountain that we've been going up to every week and listening about what Jesus had to say. And so I thought I'd show him down here and ask him some questions, right? And so I did. Thank you, Fiona Dirkside. I got a request from Fiona, and she wants to ask Father AJ, do you like Star Wars? And if you do, who is your favorite character? Oh, do I like Star Wars? Yes, I love Star Wars. Oh, good. I do. I, do. I, I am not as familiar with the most recent uh, uh, installments of the of, of the Star Wars, tri no, it's not even a trilogy now of yeah. the Star Wars franchise. I am not as familiar with right. those. Um, although my son, who loves Star Wars even more than I do, oh wow, possibly as much as Fiona, even, Ooh. believe it or not. Oh, no. um, when he, he comes he, to town, we'll have to get you two together. Yes, <laughs> he like others I've heard um, spent most of his time in church clutching. Uh, Luke Skywalker ah. figurine. Yeah, Fiona, um, I told him about your Darth Vader doll yes. that you had, that you liked to clutch when you were young. You probably still have it, so. I guarantee you, my son would be able to, he couldn't find much in his room would be my guess, but he could definitely <laughs> find at least one Luke Skywalker, uh, close and, at hand. And I bet there's others, others of you out there who have the same thing, I'm sure. Yes. Fiona, yes. I know you're not alone. Well, Especially Father AJ here and your son, so perfect. But Star Wars is an important film. It's an important theme. It talks about topics that we understand as, as followers of, of Jesus um, who, who walked in the force, uh, whose yeah. the Spirit of God was in him, and he followed that uh, and used it as a force for good for the world. So we understand uh, the movie Star Wars makes a lot of sense to me as a priest as well as uh, a movie goer. I like it. So who's your favorite character? Oh, my favorite character? Yeah, come on! Um, you know, I think of all my characters, I guess my favorite, it's so hard to tell because, I right, I mean, it covers such a, a huge span. So I, I know this is kind of a, it seems like a lazy choice. But I, I think Luke Skywalker is my favorite. Well, that's not a lazy choice. Yeah, well, it's such you an can't obvious have a lazy choice. choice. Yeah. Um, so. But I guess he's the one I, I feel most familiar with. So I, I will probably go with Luke. I like it. I like it. Okay. Thank you very much. And Fiona, thank you for a great calling in and asking. Yes. Um, okay. So my next question is, do you have a favorite color? Mm, do I have a favorite color? Yeah. Well, I, I tend to wear a lot of black. Right. But is that your favorite color? I'm not even sure black is a color. Isn't it's black no. an absence of color, right? Or is it a... 
I think combination it is. of all the it colors. It might be the absorption of all the all colors, colors, where white is the reflection of all the okay. colors. Okay. All right, so that's not a good no. answer. So if I had to say uh, a favorite color, I would probably pick, I was going to say gold. Is that a color? Gold, yeah, yeah, that's a color. That's unusual. I would have never thought of gold, but I like it. Well, because it's shiny. It's shiny. Yeah. It's um, it does reflect light. Yeah. But I was actually kind of thinking because the colors of my favorite sports team are black and gold, so uh, it can't be black. Well, there we go gold. for the New Orleans Saints. Right. Yes. Okay. Well, that all makes sense then. I totally like it. And then the last question I was going to ask you is. What does AJ stand for? Oh my gosh, that's a longer story. Oh. Do we have enough time? Well, sure. Okay. <laughs> so um, I have a lot of names. Oh, okay. In addition to having kind of a silly name, but my full name is William okay. August oh. Jude Heine wow. Jr. Wow. That's a lot of names, isn't it? William August Jude Heine Jr. That's and, amazing. And so AJ stands for my two middle names, yeah, August, August and, and Jude. Jude. I like it. I like it. Well, thank you very much. It's been awful oh, fun to be with you today. I'm glad to be with y'all. Yeah. and we'll Until look we can be together, we'll be together again. like this. What is it? May the force be with you. May the force be with you. There we you. go. All righty. <laughs> y'all have a good day. Bye, Bye. everybody. Okay, well, our craft for this week is a courage bracelet. So you have string in your kits and some beads, and there are letters on the beads. You, they write the letters. You on write the, the letters. letters you the write the letters on the beads, and you can spell out courage. And this will remind you to have courage and that God is standing with you. When you have to make hard decisions, he's right there beside you. Absolutely. Have fun. So, yeah, have fun with that. And now what we're going to do is we're going to do our meditation of sitting still like a frog. When you sit still like a frog, what you need to do is sit with your back up straight and you can put your legs out in front of you or you can cross them. You want to focus on yourself. You can close your eyes, you can half close your eyes, or you can keep them open. Do whatever is comfortable for you. Frogs can leap for great distances and they can croak very loudly. But did you know that they can sit still for a very long time and not do anything at all? It can be difficult to sit still at first, but once you practice and the more you practice, the better you get, and soon you will be sitting still like a frog. Sitting still like this can help you feel calm. Your legs are still, your arms are still, your bottom is still, and your head is still. And while you're sitting still, you may notice that something's always moving. Your eyes, or your finger, or your bottom. And that's okay, because the longer you practice, the better you get, and soon you will get used to it. But you know what else is moving no matter how hard you sit still? And it's your breath. Put your hands on your belly. Feel your breath moving up a bit and down a bit. Up a bit and down a bit. This calms you down when you can feel your breath. Why don't you try it a couple of times on your own? 
Feel your breath moving up and down. You are doing a fantastic job. When you listen to your breath, it can be really helpful, say, if you've fallen down and hurt yourself, or if you're angry, or maybe you're just tired and you need to have a rest and you just wanna relax. So you may feel like, pra you may feel like pr practicing to sit still like a frog tomorrow or the next day and I hope you will, and I hope you have a great time. Thank you. You're welcome. Hmm. Well, now that we're all nice and relaxed. I know, now we're gonna close with prayer. Yeah. So, dear, dear Jesus, Jesus, with you before us, beside us, and within us, we can face anything. Please give us courage and strength to keep following you, even when others don't understand or harm us. We pray for all your children, including those who persecute people for following your way. Amen. Everybody have a great week. Yes, see you next time. Take care, yes, see you next time. Bye. Bye.